Mm. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. We hope you had a happy holiday. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy New Year. Happy, happy Festivus. Kwanzaa. Whatever it is you celebrate. Uh, we hope you had a good one. We are back for 2023 with our season five premiere. That's right. It is season five. And tonight is episode 88. We're revisiting one of our favorite topics, films that time forgot. We are Films and Fermentation, a movie and alcohol podcast. I'm Leo. I'm Kevin. I'm Mike. Just three friends who like to talk shit about movies while getting shit-faced. In this episode, we celebrate our season five premiere by breaking out one of our favorite topics, films that time forgot. Is this the fourth or fifth time that we did this? I lost count. Um, I want to say it's the fourth time. I want to say it's the fourth time, too. I don't think yeah. we've quite done it five times. I'm try I was trying to think earlier about which movies I had done so that I don't repeat myself. I know, because I looked up, uh, I have a Google Doc that I saved where I have all the movies that I did. And I only had three listed. So I'm like, okay, so I'm guessing this is number four then. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it definitely is one of our favorite topics. It never disappoints. It usually ends up being a really good episode. A lot of fun trying to guess each other's choices. So don't forget to drop us an email at filmsandfermentation at gmail.com. Uh, we're looking for drink suggestions, uh, film suggestions, topics, things that we can talk about. Uh, we have a new segment I'd like to try to introduce into the show later on. So we'd like to get some questions from people out there that we'd like to answer on the show. Um, visit linktree.com slash films and fermentation to find all of our social media and podcast links. You can also find links to Patreon on our Linktree site. Uh, if you like the show and you want us to keep doing it and you'd like to support us in our endeavor here, visit us at Patreon and become a Patreon member. Uh, or you can go to teespring.com and visit the Films and Fermentation official storefront to get some of our merchandise. This episode is brought to you by Dubby. Dubby is an all-natural energy drink. Dubby is an all-natural energy drink. It uses a patented all-natural coffee cherry extract to help fuel you. This ingredient is what gives Dubby its laser focus and fast reflexes, making it perfect for gamers everywhere. Dubby contains important amino acids and vitamins that canned energy drinks simply do not have. Dubby never uses fillers or artificial colors. It's a sugar-free and keto-friendly alternative energy drink. Choose from flavors such as Dragonade, Beach and Peach, and Galaxy Grenade. Guaranteed to boost energy without giving you the jitters. Go to W.GG to order today. Use the promo code FILMSFERMENT and receive 10% off every order every time. Dubby, be better. Dubby, Dubby! Not GG. All right, gentlemen, what are we drinking this evening, speaking of drinks? Oh, yeah. So I'm not going to say what my drink is yet, uh, because my drink is actually the same name as the movie I chose. Oh, so I'm yeah. going to save mine for when I actually do the movie. So, Mike, what you got going on? I went with the, uh, one of the old smoky moonshine cocktails. This is the apple pie ginger. It is nine percent alcohol by volume, and I gotta work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. <laughs> it's, it's it's smooth and sweet, and got that ginger ale taste to it. Really nice. Yeah, sounds good. Nice, Kev. I am drinking a waffle cone a la mode. It's a <laughs> stout with vanilla and waffle cone pieces <laughs> from Three Threes Brewing Company, right here in. New Jersey, uh, six percent alcohol by volume. It is New Jersey, right? Yeah, drink local New Jersey, packed in Hamilton, Hamilton, New Jersey. So, I guess you weren't That's able to bring anything back from London, great. right? Mm -hmm. I miss no, Kevin. They had their duty free Jesus. shots, uh, shops, but um, we were we were holding things together, you know, by the seams as it was <laughs> coming home. Bungee so. cords, huh? Yeah. yeah, and what make doesn't make any sense is we didn't buy a lot, you know, like Megan and I might have bought a shirt each, one shirt each, and everything else is small little trinkets and stuff. So, plus it's a long drive from England to New Jersey. 
It, it is. is. It's yeah. a very long drive. Very bumpy road. Yeah, I go all the way across Canada into <laughs> Alaska over the, you know, take a ferry over into Russia. So. so you're in my sound going in and out during the episode. I have a cold and I'm coughing a lot and I'm trying not to record my cough. So <laughs> uh, I like Kevin that you know, now that the holiday drinks are over, we're back to our uh, breakfast. Uh, breakfast. Oh, fires. <laughs> Um, I've only had two or three mad elves this season. I'm kind of disappointed in myself. I had a whole bunch I was I had for you. For yeah. For the party. Mike, yeah. Like, Mike like bought a case for you for the party. <laughs> uh, we're going to we're gonna have to like kill it next time we're together. Sounds good to me. Uh, Mike, it's been a while. I can use a history lesson. This day in film history. This day in film history in 19... Uh, oh, good Jesus Christ. In 2016... <laughs> yes, yes, he was. Yes. <laughs> out of practice. I'm out of practice. This day in film history in 2016, Star Wars The Force Awakens breaks North American box office records passing the 765... 60.5 million taken by Avatar. Which has currently been destroyed by Avatar The Way of Water, I believe. Probably. <laughs> Have you, neither of you have seen the sequel or no. have any interest in it, right? No. no, I haven't seen it. I'll see it when it comes on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, that's um, what I'm figuring, too. I know I know you haven't started it yet, but Kev, have you started watching uh, National Treasure yet? Uh, no, I've been going through Willow, and I did watch the uh, Bad Batch, the uh, two episodes that they put up yeah, yesterday. I gotta, I gotta catch all those, but yeah. Uh, not bad. It's not a bad series. No, is uh is my favorite person. No, uh, but his little buddy series. showed up in one episode. Riley oh, cool. Yeah, Riley showed up. They did confirm that they are working on the script for National Treasure three and are hoping to start filming it soon though. And it was and the plot of it was already mentioned in the series. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I sent you guys a link to a trailer earlier. Did you get a chance to watch it? <clears throat> was it Cocaine Bear? No, it was a uh, it was the trailer for Renfield, starring no. Nicolas Cage as Dracula. <laughs> oh, no, you know what? Trailer. It's all that come through. But I was exhausted today, so after I cleaned up the house a bit, I passed out. <laughs> I don't think I can find my phone. Where the hell's my phone? Oh, there it is. Never mind. So, I mean, you guys that's what's watch... plugged into your eye, that's what's plugged into your 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 laptop as your camera, <laughs> <laughs> as your phone. So just uh, yeah, you guys take a take a look at the trailer later. It looks pretty. It looks pretty batshit crazy. No pun intended. I will check that <laughs> out. I want to share share with you guys a gift my wife got me for Christmas, and mm-hmm. I think you could appreciate this. Gone with the gin, cocktails with a Hollywood twist. Nice. <laughs> So I figure we may be able to throw some of these out there from time to time. Mike has a book called Big Whiskey. Uh huh. And the distillery, <laughs> America's Distilleries. Yeah, uh, Mike, Kentucky whiskey and the birth, rebirth of rye. Mm. That's about Tennessee and Kentucky and stuff like that. And you got me. Uh, you got me a couple books that are drink related as well. <laughs> I don't. I don't have them in front of me right now. Mike also got me a, a, a gift that I really like, and I was like. I wanted to use it tonight, but I was like, I let this drink is too perfect not to do. So I'll have to mm-hmm. use this another night. He got me a glass for uh, next time I have some beer on the show and says, this beer tastes like I won't be going to work tomorrow. <laughs> 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 so that'll be my drinking glass for the show. Nice. Uh, Mike, what's your fun drink fact for tonight? So, uh, just so you guys know, I got, did get a new calendar. So a new <laughs> year a day calendar. So, I'm going to start off with the first page of it. Mm-hmm. It's uh, beer holidays, National Hangover Day. <laughs> Every hangovers, <day>. are ca- <laughs> <laughs> hangovers are caused by an excess of acylatides in the liver. Your liver meta- blah, blah, blah. metabolizes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, metabolizes alcohol by breaking it down into acylatides. Too much alcohol means too much acetylates and can accumulate in toxic amounts, causing hangover symptoms. Causing hangover symptoms. Sorry, uh, hair of the dog. 
Uh, more alcohol, coffee, and pain relievers are only to lay these symptoms. They aren't actually remedies. What does work is rehydration, rest, and eating a meal high in potassium, uh, complex carbohydrates, and a bit of fat. There you go, boys. So this is try a whole wheat um, tortilla with egg and some avocado with your glass of water. Your head. I, I always prefer some good old French toast. <laughs> French toast. French toast. French toast. So um, our audience, if they get hangovers, don't try to ones that don't work. Well, I always figure when I always found the best remedy for hangovers is to drink some more. That's because they just mm-hmm. get drunk again. Yeah, yeah. hair of the dog. <laughs> yeah, it just keeps you drunk. Exactly. Okay. Uh, so I don't have too many notes from the last show, obviously, since the last show was over two weeks ago. Uh, I did Way three back in 2022. 2000. <laughs> so, uh, I did three mini pods over the, uh, Christmas and New Year's holidays. I had two originally that I planned and then one that I kind of did on the fly. Cause after I watched the film, I was like, I, I need to talk about this a little bit. So I did a, a mini pod for Violet Night. Uh, the Christmas action film starring David Harbour as Santa Claus. The movie was everything I wanted it to be and was not disappointed by it. Uh, I highly recommend checking it out, especially if you like a a movie that doesn't take itself seriously and knows exactly what it's supposed to be. Uh, I watched The Glass Onion, the new Knives Out mystery. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was about two hours long, and I would say the first hour and a half were really entertaining, and then the last half hour disappointed me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because it was a very convoluted, like, ending to the the film. And it went, like, the first film was pretty grounded. The second one kind of got a little over the top by the end, and uh, I'm hoping I just the last 15 minutes really when they started just breaking the glasses. And yeah, it, it just it got a little got a little got a little out of hand at the end there. Yeah. Um, I mean it was it, he's good and it still is Benoit Blank, but it got a little 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 out of hand. He's still and uh, then the other day I watched Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio uh, on Netflix. <laughs> it was really good. Uh, uh, wow. Definitely not the Disney live action cash grab. <laughs> Uh, it was it was actually based on the uh, Carlo Collodi uh, novel Pinocchio, uh, so it was pretty dark. Uh, you know, Guillermo del Toro likes his dark films, and fucking depressing. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pretty depressing movie, but it was it was good. It's worth watching, and really really good voice acting from Ewan McGregor who plays the uh, cricket, mm-hmm. and. Uh, the actor, I can't remember the actor's name who does the voice of Geppetto, but it's the uh, Walder Gray from uh, Game of Thrones, and he was uh, the the caretaker in Harry Potter. Oh, um, um, the one that I, I know who you're thinking oh, of. Oh, Bradley. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah Bradley David Bradley. David Bradley. Yeah, he was he was the uh, the voice of Geppetto, and he was really really good. And it's a musical. <laughs> and I'm like, it had original songs written for the film. And I'm like, man, only Guillermo del Toro has the balls big enough to write a Pinocchio musical when Disney had already done it. <laughs> yeah. And, and monetized, yeah, monetized off of When You Wish Upon a Star. Yeah. That and was essentially and, their theme song for everything. And it's funny because the songs that, that they have for this film are uh, very much themed to the story and kind of like connect to each other. It was interesting. And it takes place during World War II in fascist Italy. Um, that's like mm-hmm. the only sort of modernization he did to it. Um, but it actually, it works for the story. So Mussolini makes a guest appearance. He it. does. Mussolini does makes he? a guest appearance. <laughs> 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 and they really, they really, uh, they really make a caricature out of him. He's one of the funnier parts of the film. <laughs> wow. Uh, I have a fun IMDB fact here. Uh, I had looked up before who has the most acting credits on IMDb, and as far as I can tell, it's uh, James Hong, who's a, a Chinese actor, been in a million different things. If you've seen a movie, he's in it. Uh, he was uh, Lo Pan and and Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, okay, yeah, he was in like yeah, Balls yeah. of Fury. He was in a million movies. Mm-hmm. He has like over nine hundred and something credits on IMDb. 
Um, wow. But some of them are uh, credits in, in uh, China as well as in America. So I was curious to see, like, who is the American actor with the most acting credits? And it was hard to kind of, like, nail down who it is, but I'm pretty sure I figured it out. Tom it, looks, it, no, it looks like the <laughs> actor with the most credits on IMDb is Eric Roberts. Really? Yes. Like he does, like, movies, like, once a week. It's, like, crazy. Wow. Like, he has, here you go, ready? 617 acting credits. Oh, wow. As of this week. <laughs> <laughs> and he has 93 upcoming credits for the next two years. <laughs> so motherfucker is going to have over uh, 700 acting credits by the end of like next year. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know back in like the 80s, he was like in every fucking thing. Every yeah, movie. but I mean like back then though too, like he was like a main actor so he does a lot of like cameos and one-off appearances and, and shit like that in films anymore and that's mm. kind of why he has so many credits he, he, i'm sure he, he, he's probably done cameos in films he's never seen himself <laughs> I'm sure so i got a uh, idea for a possible new segment and a lot of this is going to depend on uh submissions we get from people who listen to the show so we'll see how it goes uh, Ooh, but I, interactive I, now. yeah, an interactive segment. I want to call it's. I'm tentatively calling it in your opinion, and it's basically going to be like a movie question. Uh, that's not like a straight up like what's your favorite movie kind of question, but one that kind of makes you think a little bit, and isn't necessarily a question that could fill up an entire show. <clears throat> so for tonight, I came up with this question here. Uh, I actually heard this on another podcast, and I thought it was a cool question. Who is an actor that when you saw them for the first time, you said to yourself, that person's going to be a superstar? So, like, who's, like, somebody mm -hmm. you, you think of, you saw them in a film, and you're like, wow, that that person's going to be, you know, the next big thing. I had, a, I had a couple that popped in my head when I was thinking about it. So, one of them for me was uh, Natalie Portman. Yeah, with a professional. Yeah, I saw her in a professional, and I was like, wow, this kid's an amazing actress. She's really good. And then I saw her in Beautiful Girls, and it's a completely different role, but she's just as amazing in it. And I'm like, this kid's going to be have a bright future. you right. know. And then she, she phoned it in for three Star Wars films, but that's okay. She still won an Oscar later on. So, <laughs> uh, I also thought of Ed Norton. What was the he, first movie you remember his, seeing him? His, in? Fir his first movie was Primal Fear. Oh, and yeah, it's yeah, the, yeah. The one where he plays the guy who apparently has split personalities, but then you find out he was faking the whole thing to get off with the Dude, murdering spoiler the guy. alert. God. <laughs> if you haven't seen a movie that came out in 1993 by this point, you just weren't I was going to catch it on Redbox. <laughs> you know who uh, I thought, I thought of when I first... And this is an, what I first saw was years and years ago. This is not... A, and he's a superstar now. Would be um. Why does this have his name? I talk too much. Um, Denzel Washington. Yeah. Because I saw when we saw when he first came on, he was he wasn't that big of a star, but he was great at what he was doing. Yeah, and the first thing I saw him in was Glory. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that wasn't his first film, but that was the first thing I saw oh. him in. Yeah, he was and, great uh, for it. Yeah, he won the Oscar for it, and I'm like, oh, that's yeah. that's usually the first step right there. Mm. Uh, you know I also thought, I thought of uh, go ahead. Um, I think his first was Encino Man, uh, but Paulie Shore. <laughs> I, was, I thought you were going to say I Brendan was, Fraser. I was really wrong. I was really wrong. I was ready for Brendan Fraser. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan Fraser is making a comeback with that whale movie. So <laughs> I was wrong. I was very, yeah. very wrong. I thought of uh, uh, also uh, Flo Shot Austin? <laughs> Flo uh, Florence Pugh. Mm -hmm. um, so I saw her in uh, Fighting with My Family, and she's really good in that film. And I thought, you know, she could be pretty big. And then she did, you know, Yelena Belova and the uh, White mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Black Widow and all that. And, you know, she's been in a lot of movies. So, yeah, she's a great actress. Uh, so I just thought that would be like a cool segment to add to the show, just have people like kind of 
ask us questions similar to that one. Like, you know, it's the questions that kind of make you think a little bit. And, you know, in your opinion. I saw Batista in the wrestling ring. Yeah. I thought he'd be Houston. <laughs> I, I said to Mike, so Batista's in Glass Onion. And he actually is one of the better characters in the film. Hmm. And I thought to myself, I said, you know, of all the act of all the wrestlers turned actors, Dave hmm. Batista is not the one I thought would be making choices. <laughs> but he has made some choices. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm looking forward to the new movie he's he's in. A, it's an M. Night Shyamalan film called uh, Knock at the Cabin. Oh, yeah. That looks he's, awesome. Yeah, he's going to play the villain <laughs> in that film. Uh, so you know as I thought, no, on a serious okay. note, um, mm -hmm. Anna Taylor Joy, when you saw oh, yeah. her, yeah, her first movie was, mm -hmm. I think it was actually, um, um, I think it was the uh, M. Night Shyamalan, the, mm -hmm. the split, the split, yeah, yeah, you know, I don't know if that's her first movie, but that's the first time I've seen her, right, in a film, that was and the I first remember thing thinking, that got me. I remember thinking she's oddly beautiful mm -hmm. she has an odd face but she's really pretty and she's a great actress yeah and she she really she plays well against um james mcavoy in that film yeah you yeah. know and then, and then i saw the her witch. she did the witch she did uh queen's gambit on netflix queen's gambit was really good um yeah she was in a, a last night at soho which i haven't seen yet but i kind of i still want to kind of check really it out. good that was yeah. really good i saw that and i'm looking forward to seeing the restaurant no, the menu. Uh, the, the, the menu. menu. Yeah, I want to yes. see that too. So yeah, she that's a good one, the Honey Taylor Joy. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> so I want to, uh, of course, as we usually do, we're going to give some shout outs uh, per your oh, usual oh, request, oh. gentlemen. I, I color coded them and uh, I'll try not to fuck it up tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, I changed <laughs> I changed uh, who is saying the shout out to who a little bit. Uh, and I have some Twitter uh, messages to read for some people. So uh, shout out to the following podcasts who have supported us in different ways and who we also support as well. Uh, if you get a chance, make sure you check out these podcasts. I listened to a bunch of new episodes over uh, the holidays because uh, I actually had the time to do so at this point. And, uh, yeah, there's there's some really good uh, uh, content out there if you give it a shot. So shout out and a thank you to... Austin Boyer, host of Wrestling World. Give a shout out to Manic Pixie Weirdo Podcast. <laughs> Thanks going out to Recast 2.0. We're uh, we're still with you, Wayne. <laughs> uh, shout out to the Bar Banter uh, guys. A good thank you to Mister Gentleman. Uh, shout out to eighty seven fifty with Yeti F. Shout out to Space Castle, who I've, uh, you know, we always say in the past are the guys that created our logo for us. Hey, thanks, Mandalorians. We love you, teachers. <laughs> <laughs> Today we laughed and learned. Thanks so much for your support. Uh, big shout out and thank you to the hosts of All Hallows Eve, who always have something really nice to say about us on their show. Uh, and recently, uh, when I put out a couple of the mini pods, uh, they wrote, uh, for the good, uh, for the mini pod I did for Glass Onion, they wrote, I've heard different reviews about it. Definitely going to check it out. Everybody give this a listen on good pods. And then for Violent Night, he wrote a uh, great little mini episode at Films Ferment. Uh, everybody, you can listen to it out there on good pods. So again, guys, thank you for your support. We want to give a big thank you out to the voice of four. Uh, shout out to DJ Scoob at the Undiscovered Entrepreneur. Thanks, guys. Uh, this is a new uh, podcast on our shout out list, uh, or new for us at least, the Experts in Theory podcast. Uh, I put them on here because uh, a little while back, Good Pods asked a question on Twitter. If somebody's logo can be put in a uh, museum, whose logo should it be? And the uh, Experts in Theory podcast nominated our show logo for it. And so oh, I wanted to give them a shout out for that. But I also want to say, remember, Space Castle are the guys that made our logo. So shout out to them again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, give a big shout out to the Geeky Dad podcast. Stop thinking with your butt. 
<laughs> their uh, their last episode was it was a pretty funny one. Uh, shout out to you, me, and a movie with Donald, of course. And uh, that is because uh, on Donald's last episode, which was uh, he and his guest uh, covered Citizen Kane on his on that episode. Oh, yeah. Uh, he mentioned us in his shout out segment and how we're always shouting out and supporting him. But, you know, he supports us just as much. So he's a good guy, Donald. And we got to get big thank you for the best uh podcast name out there the masturbators <laughs> uh shout out to the van i'm sorry the fan in the van uh thanks so uh his last episode fan in the van uh talked about the serious injury that happened on the monday night football game this week uh mm-hmm. and uh, he had some he had some really good uh opinions about what happened and I, I agreed with a lot of them and I told them about it because uh, it was a really serious event so if you get a chance listen to his last uh, his last episode uh, which he talks about um, Damar Hamlin who got injured during that Monday Night Football game. Did you hear the latest update? Yeah he's he was able to write uh, a message to the doctors uh, today. Uh, yes, you want to yeah, he he wrote on a piece of paper uh, for did the doctors. We did we win? Yeah, <laughs> so that's really cool that he's he's recovering. I mean, because that was yes, that yes. was a serious serious incident. Uh, cool. Shout out to the fourteen twenty Sports Bar podcast. Uh, shout out to Wrestling Fans Insight. All right, so that is our shout out list for this week. Everybody, again, thank you for all your support. Uh, everybody out there, if you get a chance, make sure you listen to those podcasts. Uh, our main segment tonight is brought to you by Newsly. Newsly dot me. <clears throat> Newsly is an all-in-one audio super app for iOS and Android. It picks up the most trending articles on the web on topics you choose at any given moment and reads them to you in a natural human voice. For the first time ever, the entire web becomes listenable all in one place. Follow any topic from sports tech, business, science, even Bitcoin. It will find you the latest articles and read them to you aloud. And they have podcasts as well. Explore trending podcasts from over 80 countries. Our podcast is there too. Download and use Newsly for free now from www.newsly.me or from the link in the description and use the promo code ENDFERMENT to receive a one-month free premium subscription. Stop scrolling. Start listening. Newsly! Newsly! Got me. And we are back with our main segment of the evening. One of my favorite topics. I love love doing this shit. And uh, that's why we decided to always make it our season premiere topic. And it's Films That Time Forgot where we talk about movies from our youth that we remember fondly and uh, you just don't really hear about or see about, see too much of it anymore. Uh, my choice tonight, I'm not sure if it actually counts as a film that time forgot, but it's a film that I really like that I kind of forgot about because I hadn't seen it in a while. And when I came across it recently on HBO Max, I rewatched it, remembered how much I loved it and decided this is the movie I'm going to talk about. So if you guys don't mind, also because my voice is getting a little thin right now, uh, I think I'm going to go first, if that's okay with you. All right. Fine, fine. (laughs) And I will tell you what my drink is at the end, because my drink is actually named after the film I chose. All right. So my film came out in 1997. So this is the most recent film I've chosen so far. Uh, I actually think you guys will. I'm not trying to trick anybody tonight because I actually think you guys will probably figure this one out uh, pretty easily. Uh, but again, it's one that I just haven't seen in a while, and I, I really like this film. Directed by Peter Cotineo, who also directed the movie The Rocker with Rain Wilson and numerous TV credits, stars Robert Carlyle, uh, who you might know as Rumple Stillskin from uh, Once Upon a Time TV show. Uh, it stars Tom Wilkinson, Tom Wilkinson, who uh, American audiences might know best as Sal Maroney in Batman Begins. 
and Robert one. Addy, who played uh, Robert Baratheon in the first season of Game of Thrones. <laughs> so these are all English actors. <laughs> Six unemployed steel workers form a male striptease act. Women in the town cheer them on as they tell them about the fact that they're performing in total nudity. Yes, it's the full Monty. It's the full Monty. <laughs> like I said, I wasn't going for trickery tonight. I had, you guys were going to figure this one out easily. Yeah. Uh, full. I love the full Monty. It's 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 such a funny show, a funny movie. You got some great quotes in it. Yeah. Uh, just like a feel good film, you know, like an actual like feel good comedy. A nice uh, family film to watch on a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> It actually um, is kind okay. of a family film because it's about, you know, it's, it, there's a father-son relationship right at the center of it. And um, I, what I like about it is you don't often see comedies get a lot of, like, Oscar love. And uh, mm. this one this one got nominated for Best Picture, uh, Best Screenplay. Uh, it did win the Oscar for Best Original Song, um, uh, but didn't win anything else. But, you know, just to get some... some uh, uh, recognition from the Academy Awards is, is a big deal. So my drink this evening is called Le Full Monty. Uh, I haven't tasted it yet. I've been waiting till we got to this segment, so it's probably a little watered down at this point. Uh, but it is bourbon, vermouth, and bitters uh, hmm. thrown together in a shaker with ice. Pour it over some ice. Cheers. Cheers. Ah. Uh, Oh, I'm hoping that clears up the sinuses a little bit. Ooh, that's, <laughs> that's that. That's ooh, really man. I put more bourbon in it than anything else because I love bourbon. But even though I put more bourbon than anything else, all I taste that is vermouth. vermouth is kicking <laughs> in, isn't it? That vermouth is strong. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not bad. I'm not ready to take my clothes off yet, but, you know. <laughs> so You guys were talking about family films. Yeah. Which leads right into mine. Okay, but I'm mine not done with mine yet. Film. Oh, okay. oh. Just because you guys guessed it didn't mean I have other shit have other shit to talk about. No, no, no. We moved on. We moved on. He went to the drink. So in the decaying steel mill town of Sheffield, England, friends Gaz and Dave, now unemployed and on the dole for the closure of their steel mill, uh hang out together with Gaz's twelve year old son Nathan, uh, and decide that they are going to, in order to make some money, strip. Uh, because there was a Chippendale uh, act that came through town recently. They saw how mu how popular it was, how much money the guys made. So they get together with a bunch of other guys that are out of work. None of them look like strippers. None of them should actually probably take their clothes off in public, um, but they do. Then hilarity ensues, and it's it it, it really is like a feel good movie because it's it's silly, but it has some it has some great uh, great moments in it. Uh, so I have a little bit of like trivia and some quotes from the film. Uh, the guys actually did get nude in the last scene of the film. So in the final scene of the film, the the six guys who were dancing on stage take all their clothes off and then they throw their hats into the crowd at the end and you see their asses, like you see an ass shot from behind. But they were actually frontal nudity as well in front of 400 extras. <laughs> so those six dudes were brave enough to actually, you know, show their junk to a bunch of strangers. Let's uh, hope the junk didn't have stage fright. Yeah, for the sake of filming. I think it said they were all they were all drinking beforehand just to get the courage up to do it. And that Robert Carlyle had uh drank so much beforehand that when he kisses his son on the cheek in the in the previous scene, it was ad libbed and the kid actually had a natural reaction to getting kissed by Robert Carlyle in the scene. Like, <laughs> he's really shocked. Uh it, there were a number of American cinemas that actually printed out and handed out translation sheets to people in the crowd so they would understand some of the slang that they used in the film. <laughs> there are a lot of things, uh, a lot of things in there that were uh, hard to understand. It won an Oscar for best music, original music, or comedy score. The category had been created two years prior and then was eliminated two years after that. So they are only one of six films to win that Oscar. <laughs> Jesus. Um, this is weird. In November 1998, King Charles III reenacted the unemployment office scene on national television with some young members of the Prince's Trust. 
So he did the you know, hot stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's it's I, I it's I yeah I, I can't say enough. I love this movie, and here's some some quotes from the film that I really like. <clears throat> He's fat. You're thin. You're both fucking ugly. <laughs> when they when they tell their friends about the idea for stripping, and then mm-hmm. there's the one guy, like a real skinny guy with red hair, who's who's like real meek and mild and all that. And uh, and he's like something about like he says something about like uh, I don't know if I could get up there and strip and he goes that's okay you're pretty much a bastard anyway <laughs> like nobody likes you uh, anti wrinkle cream there may be but anti fat mm. bastard cream there is not <laughs> uh, the less I eat the fatter I get and so the guy goes so stuff yourself maybe I'll get thin <laughs> 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 so. They get arrested for dancing in, uh, you know, for like indecent exposure and things like that. And they're in the they're in the police station, and the police are interviewing uh, the main character's son. Mm-hmm. And the guy goes, "So your daddy dances in front of you, does he?" And the son goes, "Only when he's rehearsing." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but one of my favorite scenes in the film, it's not a quote, it's just a scene that I love is uh, when the older character played by Tom Wilkinson is uh, interviewing for a new job. He's been out of work for six months. His wife doesn't even know that he lost his job. She's been charging things up on her credit card for six months and he, has no, he hasn't been working. He finally gets a job interview and he's sitting in the interview talking to the bosses and the two guys, Gaz and, and the other guy show up outside and they have these gnomes that they stole out of his garden and they're in front of the window and they're dancing with the gnomes like putting the nose, like dancing back and forth, like, and he's like watching this as he's trying to interview for the job. And the next thing you know, the two gnomes smash together, <laughs> and he ends up. I think he ends up losing the job because of it. Uh, here are the taglines for the film. Uh, the tagline in England was six men with nothing to lose who dare to go the full Monty." And then the American tagline, because nobody in America actually knew what a fucking full Monty is. <laughs> the American tagline was the year's most revealing comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Got to dumb it down for the Americans. Mm-hmm. So, Mike, go ahead. If my family film goes right into your family film, let's let's hear it. Oh, you're talking about family film. Mine is a family film. Mine is from 1989. Uh, directed by Sidney Lumet, okay. who, also, who also directed 12 Angry Men, mm-hmm. uh, Murder on the Orient Express, mm-hmm. The Wiz, and Running on Empty. Uh, the film stars are Sean Connery, Dustin Hoffman, and Matthew Broderick. You love oh, your I Matthew this Broderick. One. This is um, Highlander. <laughs> yeah, Matthew Broderick is the is the, is the highly. Uh, Sean Connery, it's, Matthew it can Broderick, only be one. It can only be Dustin one. Hoffman, Sean Connery, Matthew Broderick, and Dustin Hoffman. You said eighty nine. I know 89. I've seen this. I definitely have, have seen this movie. I just can't remember the movie that the three of them were in. Well, not animated, is it? No, 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 this is live action. Nineteen eighty nine. That's funny because this is one of the years that I put down for uh, for like a, a year for, a year for great cinema. Was it Zardoz? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's a joke. From Russia with love. <laughs> uh, Definitely not the Untouchables. <laughs> Let me put it to you this way. Mm-hmm. Sean Connery mm-hmm. is the father. Dustin Hoffman is his son. And Matthew Broderick is his son. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely have seen this movie before, and I can't think of I the name not. of it. Oh, okay. Then I'll, 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 <laughs> um, I'll give you the movie tagline. How about that? All right. Give me the tagline. There's nothing like a good robbery to bring a family together. Oh, Jesus Christ. I definitely have seen this movie. I've seen a lot of Sidney Lumet films too, so it's like it's like really pissing me off that I can't think of the name of it. Uh, fuck. <laughs> fuck. 
I'm not getting. Hey, you're making no, me I'm feel great. Getting. I'm stumping you again. I know. Yeah, Mike's Mike uh, is really proud of himself when he when he stumps me. Um. Jesus Christ. Nope, that's not the movie. Well, you know, because like I think Matthew Broderick, and I think like crime film, I think of the Freshman, but that was Marlon yes. Brando. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bruno Kirby. You want the synopsis? Was it like the family something? Yes, it's family business. Family business. There we go. Family business. Yes. Uh, the synopsis is uh, Jesse, an, an Asian career criminal. But has been in jail, fights, schemes, and lineups than just about anyone else. His son Vito, who currently while well, currently on the straight and narrow, has had his fair, fairly shaded past, and is in, indeed no stranger to illegal activity. They both have great hope for Adam, Vito's son, and Jesse's grandson, who is bright, good looking, and without criminal past. So when Adam approaches Jesse with a scheme for a burglary, he is shocked. But not necessarily uninterested. Yeah, I definitely um, saw this movie. <laughs> I rewatched it, mm. and it does not hold up. <laughs> it was yeah. not as good as I remembered. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking at the phone book. I'm looking at the trailer on on IMDb. <laughs> yeah, it's not as good as I remembered. Um. I'm watching the trailer on IMDb. I don't have the sound on. I'm just looking at the trailer itself, and it even looks dated. It like does. like the like the cinematography looks like it's the '70s. <laughs> it does. I mean, and it, it, what's even funnier is you got Sean Connery with his his accent. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be the father of Dustin Hoffman, who's got this New York accent out the ass. Mm -hmm. Then you got his son Matthew Broderick who has no accent. <laughs> And Dustin Hoffman's character's name is Vito, which makes me think Italian. He's Italian, but he's married to a Jew. <laughs> so they're, at the Jewish, they're at the Jewish, some kind of Jewish ceremony at the beginning. Okay. <laughs> Does that explain uh, the fact that he's got a Scottish accent? <laughs> no, 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 no. He's not there. Okay. Uh, um, Jesse's not there. He was in jail. Mm. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, fight. it's, it's. <laughs> It doesn't look like it holds up. It's got a 5.7 out of 10 on IMDb. <laughs> yeah, it, does, it doesn't hold up. But, I mean, the, the director has great movies. he got mm. three phenomenal actors in it. It just doesn't hold up. <laughs> <laughs> but, again, this is why we do these films of Time for God is because we remember them as fond, fond memories from our youth, and then we rewatch mm. them, and it's like, did it hold up? Full Monty definitely held up. Uh, it's still a fucking fun movie to watch. It held up better than the Explorers did, the first movie that I chose. Uh, but yeah, Family Business. I was like, I remember seeing it. It shows you how much I remember it that I don't. I couldn't remember the name of it. <laughs> the silly new like uh, Twelve Angry Men is one of their greatest films ever made, and like you yeah. know, this this is probably definitely a, a one of Sidley Lumet's misses. <laughs> well, he had so many film. You know, some of them I don't even know. Mm -hmm. A lot of TV stuff, but I thought he went from 12, 12 Angry Men to later on doing The Wiz. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's he was a prolific director and has a very like like diverse IMDb. <laughs> he does. Uh, do you have any like quotes or trivia or anything from the film? Uh, the only uh, trivia on it was it's a movie fact that Sean Connery, who played Dustin Hoffman's father, is only seven years older than Hoffman. <laughs> that's like a, it that's a common close, that's but... a common thing though too because uh connery was only seven years older than harrison ford when he played his dad in last crusade yeah <laughs> which also came out in 1989 so that's a good year for cinema <laughs> this is a good year for connery apparently. yeah for connery yeah yeah he's coming off of uh off of uh untouchables a couple years before that yeah uh so do you have anything else you want to add to it mike or should we move on to kevin we can move on. Uh, we, I don't have to, need to brutalize you guys anymore. <laughs> Kev, what are you what are you thinking about? Okay, so let me find the format that we had put out there. Um, okay, what do you want first? The year? Do you want the director? Do you want some of the stars? What year was it? It's the titles first. 
What's that? He said, "How about the title?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'll make it. That'll make it that much harder to guess. Uh, what's uh, the year? It's in 1984. Mm. Okay. 1984. So I'm just about six years old. I'm guessing. Yeah. On this and that, that was the, that was the first year in review uh, 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 episode we did. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I doubt that you guys will remember this one or that it even made it into the year of review. Okay. Um, director was Richard Franklin. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll give you, I'll give you the pro- probably the top three stars, and let's see if, where we go from there. So, uh, it had Henry Thomas, it Henry- had Daphne Coleman, mm-hmm. and it had William Forsythe. Okay, William Forsythe was um, he played Flat Top in the Dick Tracy movie. Mm, I know, I know William Forsythe. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Henry Thomas. Um, Henry Thomas and Dabney Coleman. Like I know Henry Thomas's name. I'm trying to picture his face because I think Henry Thomas was in uh, was Henry Thomas was in ET. Yes, he was. He was uh, he was Elliot. Yes. Uh, Dabney Coleman, Elliot <laughs> from ET. <laughs> <laughs> What is it, Mike? Say again. Cloak and Dagger. You got it. Wow. Wow. It's, it's on my list. It's on your you list? Be- oh, it's one of Mike's movies, movies for later on. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually thinking about doing it, this one, too. Uh, that, <laughs> that, on my list. that would have been, yeah. been a shorter episode. <laughs> uh, I, I tried looking it up, and it gave me the uh, Cloak and Dagger Marvel series. Oh, oh okay. okay. I got to oh, gotta find it here. I got it. I got it. <laughs> okay, it's a young I... boy and his imaginary friend end up on the run while in possession of a top secret spy gadget, otherwise his known as an Atari friend is a spy. cartridge. Is a spy. <laughs> yeah, his top, his friend's a spy. His imaginary friend is it is spy. is, is Dabney mm-hmm. Coleman the imaginary friend? Dabney Coleman is the imaginary friend known as um, Jack oh, Flack. Name? Jack yep. Flack, but when they were creating it, it it's uh, he was Agent X, you know. Mm. So, but his his father is Dabney Coleman. But when um, Davy, when Henry Henry Thomas imagines this this spy, this cloak and dagger spy, it's his father's face. At, you know, it's his father okay. as the right, <laughs> right. So, and I think that's because he wants his father to be more active in his life. And his father, after dealing with the death of his wife. And raising the kid, it's just he, he's not giving him enough attention. So I can honestly say I've never seen this film. No, really? I've oh, never seen this really film. Good. So is it a they, film that holds up? Uh, it's a little dated. It's a little dated when you consider like the idea is they they oh, what was the other movie where they hid the code to something in a video game? I think it was Enemy of the State. Right. Mm-hmm. The there's a an agency that has this uh, top secret um, uh, information, but they hide it in the cartridge of an Atari twenty five hundred fifty two hundred, <laughs> and it gets uh, the uh, Henry Thomas's character ends up getting it in his possession when he um, when he borrows it from a friend of his who runs a game store, like one of the first game stores so, in 1984. I'm looking at a picture of William Forsyth in the film, and it does yeah. not look like William Forsyth. No, the guy's huge. Well, he's got like a beard and glasses, and it's not the yep. way I normally see him. But he mm-hmm. is playing a video game on a Commodore 64. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> the old Commodore 64. Mm-hmm. So I have to. I'm gonna have to watch this because I've never seen this one before. It's very rare you guys come across a movie I haven't seen. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I might have to check this one out. Yeah, it was between this and another one, and I figure I'll hold on to the to the other one for another time. I actually added a few more to my list for the next time we do this. So. Uh, do you have any like trivia or quotes or anything in the film you want to? Well, um, they were originally going to call the movie Agent X, but. Um... They, when they consulted with Atari, uh, they figured they could actually produce a video game based off of this and call it Cloak and Dagger. So wow. uh, it kind of got reworked a little bit. <clears throat> I also think this is the year that Broderick did Project X. The one could with be. the with the monkey oh, yeah, experiments. The and oh, I think that, that probably could have, that's a good movie too, but that probably would have been a one that 
would have made it confusing if you had two movies with X in the yeah. title that year. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna have to put this on my on my list of like mm-hmm. movies to catch up on because I have never I've never seen this one before. Yeah, and there's an elderly couple involved in the movie, and they were actually married in real life. John McIntyre, Jeanette Nolan. Mm. So, why do I know her? Do you have a tagline for the film? Yeah. Um, hold on, I had it. Where was it? We got to get go back to spell. Uh, the tagline was Davy Osborne is playing for keeps. That's the name <laughs> of the. Uh, that's the name of the the kid. That's the whole um, tagline. Jesus. <laughs> well, that's the tagline they have here. What else they got? A young boy and his imaginary friend end up on the run while in possession of a top secret spy gadget, an Atari cartridge. I'm, lo- I'm looking at I'm looking at one of the one of the quotes from it and says, "How did you escape?" Jack Flack always escapes. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, this is this is this is gonna go on my uh, my list here. Shit, I'm looking at some of the movies that came up as as movies like this, mm-hmm. and there's uh the Wizard with uh, uh, Fred Savage. <laughs> oh the, yeah, the Nintendo game uh, movie. Yeah, the, the Nintendo, Nintendo glove. glove. He had the Nintendo yeah. glove popularized. Oh, and, by... and guess what else comes up in the list of of similar movies? The Explorers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like the Explorers. I thought that held up pretty well. Really? I didn't think it held up at all. <laughs> yeah, look at these. Most of mine that I've picked before are on here. Space Camp, mm-hmm. Flight of the Navigator, uh, Short Circuit. Oh, I had to ask Megan if she had ever seen Batteries Not Included. I, I, yeah, yeah the didn't one we that, watch that before? And she, that was, and uh, she started subscribing it. I was like, no, that's Short Circuit. You know, uh, Batteries Not Included was Hugh Cronin and Jessica Tandy. Mm-hmm. It was the little yep. tiny robot ships. So yeah, I was gonna ask you guys what did we do before because I didn't remember all of them. I did the explorers the first mm-hmm. time. I did um Ice Pirates, the second episode. Mm-hmm. And then I did Digstown the last time, which is when Donald was on the show. Right. And tonight was the full Monty. I did Space Camp. hmm I did Flight of the Navigator. And I did The Boy Who Could Fly. Mm-hmm. I and... did um Club Paradise. Mm-hmm. I did um Lady Hawk. What was the other one that I did? I remember Club Paradise and I remember Lady Hawk. Yeah. I don't remember what the other one was you did. So so I said uh so I said uh, for a later episode this season, since we've done some actor and director deep dive episodes, I think this season I'd like to do a deep dive episode on Robin Williams. And then oh, we can, yeah. uh, that's yeah, going to be he, fun. That's a, that's a, that should be a fun one. And then we could bring Mike's uh, Club Paradise movie back up again. Which you still haven't seen. <laughs> yeah, I still haven't seen. It's on, it's on my list with Hogan and Dagger. <laughs> so Mike, do you have any beer wisdom for us this evening? Uh, tonight I have some beer history for you. Mm, okay. Yeah, there's no beer wisdom this year on the uh, <laughs> calendar. So, beer history. A Babylonian clay tablet dating back to 4,300 BCE was found with a beer recipe on it. That's well, some old ass beer. I wonder if they. I wonder if anybody <laughs> tried to make it. <laughs> I'd like to try some Mesopotamian beer. Babylonian beer. Babylonian beer. Babylon, big difference. That's a quote, ghost. What's your quote? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, how are your drinks? I didn't like my drink too much. The full Monty was not uh, what I was expecting it to be. The vermouth really overpowered the bourbon and uh, kind of made it not as tasty. Mine Kevin, was good. I, I oh, assume okay. Kevin liked his because it looks like he I just enjoyed it. it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's delicious. And Mike, uh, I know you never really have anything bad to say about uh, Old Smoky anyway. Old Smoky. Yeah, that's, well, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's really good. I had a couple. Oh, no, you... I, I had a couple of those Old Smoky cocktails in the fridge. I should have had one of them. <laughs> <laughs> this is disappointing. <laughs> so, thank you everybody for joining us this evening for episode eighty-eight. I imagine not to cough too much in this episode, but here I am mm-hmm. now, ready to cough. Hold on.
Thank you again for joining us for episode 88, our season five premiere. Uh, da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. We hope you enjoyed listening to this podcast as much as we enjoyed recording it for you. Uh, don't forget, you can drop us an email at filmsandfermentation at gmail.com or uh, visit us at linktree.com slash filmsandfermentation to find all of our social media and podcast links, including links to Patreon and Teespring, where you can support the show or buy some of our official merchandise. Uh, how about we do the Robin Williams deep dive next week? That sounds like fun. Yeah, it work. Yeah, no, sounds work good. Me, yeah. Sounds like fun. So don't forget to stop by the crossroads between pickled and fermented next week as we present episode 89, a look at the career of the great Robin Williams. I'm Leo. I'm Kevin. I'm Mike. We're happy to be back, folks. We hope you're happy to hear us again. Happy New Year. Cheers. And we'll see you next time.